like to I mean, if you could speak up a little reintroduce two concepts. The first is the concept of equivalence. I think you talked earlier about equality as being a, a kind of priority uh, for same-sex marriage advocates. And the second is the concept of regret. So in the idea of equivalence, this is actually a question for John. Uh, whether or not one favors same-sex marriage, I think for a lot of people it is a bridge too far to then go on and say that there is absolute equivalence between heterosexual marriage and homosexual marriage, that there can be no distinction, that this is sort of an, uh, an item of faith, almost of ideology, a commitment that, an orthodox commitment that we must make to the point where if anybody suggests that there might be some distinction, uh, they are going to be shut out. And for me, uh, it, it's a little bit Orwellian to, to think that, they're, that they are absolutely equivalent on, on every level. I mean, first of all, same-sex relations are intrinsically sterile. I mean, let's just take that distinction. All right. So my question to you is, how important do you think it is to commit to this absolute equivalence in order to make a strong argument or a cogent argument? That would be my question. Do the two absolutely have to go together? The second is this concept of regret. Um, I once suggested that if one of my children turned out to be gay, that I would feel some regret. And this was considered to be just a completely outré, you know, biased statement. Um, and I'm wondering how you feel about this notion that there can be something regrettable about being gay or entering into a, a same-sex relationship, whether we decide to sanction marriage or not, in the sense, for example, that one will never share a biological child with the person that one loves because of one's orientation. Uh, and, and, you know, whether that, because we have regrets about a lot of things in life. You know, we're not a mathematician, or we don't have perfect pitch, or, you know, we fall in love with someone who's not our spouse and we'll never be able to enjoy that. I mean, there, there's all sorts of things that we regret, we regret. I guess I would ask you to comment on whether you think regret can be a part of the homosexual experience without sort of detracting from the, you know, your personal integrity. Sure. Let me take them in reverse order. Far be it for me to tell anybody else what they may hope for uh, and then regret not getting. Um, look, people experience regret for all kinds of reasons. I know heterosexual couples who want to have a child, produce a child, and who can't, and feel a sense of loss and regret because that was part of their life plan. And I certainly could understand why somebody who wanted to have a child and imagine themselves having a child together physically with someone they love and coming to understand that they were gay, recognizing that's no longer an option for them, feeling a certain sense of loss or, or regret or disappointment. And I especially could understand a parent feeling that way about a child because our parents often have an image in their mind of what our lives ought to look like. They want us to be happy. My parents wanted me to be happy. I think initially they had a very hard time imagining what that would, how that could be when I was with somebody from the, of the same sex. And one of the things I've said for many years in talking about these issues is just as it took me a long time to sort of figure out how all of this is going to work out, I think we need to be patient with parents who are trying to figure that out while at the same time letting them know that what they say and do and how they react to their children can have a very powerful effect on them. And I, I, you know, I, again, I feel very fortunate. The, the first thing out of my parents' mouth when I came out to them was, you're our son, we love you, we will always love you. Then they said, don't tell your grandparents, don't tell your sister. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I sometimes say that you know, they, they reacted to it the way Italian Americans react to anything we perceive as a crisis. We yell, we scream, we cry, and then we all sit down at the table and eat because at the end of the day, we're a family, and that's the most important thing. So sure, um, people make life plans that the picture changes. It takes some time to adjust to that. And, and I don't know if regret's necessarily the right word or the word I would use. I don't feel any regrets over being a gay person, but I will say it took me some time to wrap my m mind around what that was going to look like, given the presuppositions and myths and expectations that I had. As for your first question about the equivalence, I would hope and recommend that nobody ever 
say that they're absolutely equivalent because they're obviously not. And I think that any thoughtful person would not, would, would, should be able to recognize. I, marriage equality does not mean that these two kinds of things are absolutely the same because they're obviously not absolutely the same. Neither, by the way, is the, the marriage between you know, 20-year-old newlyweds and the marriage between you know, two people who get married at, at 70. Neither is a relationship between people who have three, four, five, six, seven children and people who have no children. I mean, there are all kinds of differences <coughs> in married relationships. And I mean, I, I think that one of the problems with the rhetoric of marriage equality is that it, there's a straw man being put forth that what, what, what I'm saying, what my side is saying, is that same-sex relationships and different sex relationships are absolutely the same. Not only would I not say that, I also wouldn't say that lesbian relationships and gay male relationships are absolutely the same. There are general differences between all these different divisions.